Hi everyone, this is Dr. Bowen. Welcome back to the ethics class. I just wanted to wind up virtue ethics for us today by recapping a few things from the reading and a few things from the movie Gladiator about Marcus Aurelius. Aurelius was actually a true Caesar of Rome and one of the great leaders who was also a philosopher. We learn a lot by studying him. As you know, virtue ethics started in ancient Greece, so this is a very old tradition. Plato, Aristotle, and those that we discussed in the rhetoric lecture started thinking about what makes a virtuous character. Philosophers like Marcus Aurelius were of the more stoic tradition who thought leadership must be stern and must be maintained at all times, and it must be cultivated across one's life. For this reason, virtue ethics is a very hindsight-oriented type of theory, and it's not as usable as we would like in modern contexts where we need to make a decision on the job quickly, oftentimes every day. However, um, Commodus and Lucilla in the movie, as you saw, they were also real people. We don't know much about what their relationship was actually like. We do know that the Emperor Commodus was more interested in perhaps having fun and entertaining ladies than he was in being the leader of the free world at the time. His sister may have been an opportunist and may have not. We saw a pretty generous and flattering interpretation of her in the movie Gladiator. But I think that that time period in history is something that we can learn a lot from related to ethics. and. Thinking about this, we saw the war on the Goths taking place in Germania. That's where the movie Gladiator started. This was, of course, a real war. And the thing that makes it important is because at one point when Aurelius and Maximus were talking in the film, Aurelius asked Maximus, what is Rome? And he said, Rome is the light that I've seen the rest of the world. It is brutal and dark and cold. At that point, he was referring to the Goths in Germania, who were oftentimes called barbarians. And then Maximus said, Rome is the light. Well, was that true? We really think that Rome had some problems. Of course, it had corruption, licentiousness, avarice, many of the things that come with success. But was Rome actually a system of government that changed the world in some sense? When peoples were conquered by Rome, for example, they became Roman subjects if they were affluent, they became Roman slaves if they were not, if they were lucky enough to survive the war, that is. But Rome, at that point, would bring in a system of taxation, but they would build roadways, aquifers, public works, and public services that these societies had not yet had. It was, however, at great cost. Uh, in the war that Julius Caesar brought to the Gauls, which is modern-day France, we see a scorched earth policy. I don't know if Caesar was the first general to use this policy, but essentially it meant they burned all the land to the sides and behind the army to starve out the local population and to get a quicker surrender from the opposing forces of the Gauls, such as Vercingetorix and others who held out against Rome as long as they could. So progress is slow and painstaking, and civilization moves at a very incremental level, extremely incremental, extremely slow. Sometimes it makes a glacier look like it's moving quickly. But thinking in these terms, we see that Rome had a few things on their side in addition to the awful things that they brought, like war, death, and slavery, and oftentimes famine, they also brought a system of rights and a system of governance. Now, we know that that system was not equally applied to all. For example, women were not essentially fully citizens under Roman rule. However, they did start to have a system of government that developed over time in a way that we can see ethical growth almost mirroring moral development. So with Rome, we do have a system, although it's not a fair system, but it's a system that is aimed with fairness towards some. And it does think about leadership, character, and rights. So these are ethical concepts, although they're not ideal. They may be an improvement over the Dark Ages and the Middle Ages where we had 
horrible periods of warfare, disease, and famine, Viking raids, for example. I want you to think about what it would be like to be in that system where perhaps if you're living in a monastery in Ireland, you could be killed at any moment by a Viking raid. And that happened throughout history countless times. Some of the most important raids were on the Isle of Skye and Iona just off the coast of Ireland. So I'm posting the video of a song that has lyrics on it so you can read through that. Um, if you don't want to listen to the music, you certainly don't have to, but read through those lyrics on the video and you can understand what the world must have been like in this time period that Maximus calls brutal and dark. So when the Dark Ages ended and we get to a period where Rome begins to flourish, we also have a number of other changes. Scholarship, the Gutenberg Press, we start to get a more literate society eventually. But the thing that shows us what's important in this time period is going back to the war against the Goths, the Viking raids and so on, the source of disagreement between peoples would also result or often result in war. Um, Viking raids were common, war of all kinds were common, and it was because people sought power, wealth, lands, security, etc. Over time, we see how ethics changes that because with a system of governance, we then have the right to disagree without going to war. So then we can have a court system, we can have legal rules, we can have rights for at least some people, if not yet all people. That's the way we get the emergence of a civil society. That's the point where we start to have discourse and the right to disagree with others or the right to engage in debate and spirited debate once again emerges. And in that type of system, we don't have to be the most powerful person. We can be someone who has a good argument or a good point and win a point or a case or a ruling. So that shows us that ethics is really mirroring the development of society. And when we have a society that has civil discourse and dialogue as a growing part of it, we start to value ethics and character more. So from this point on in our course, we're going to move forward talking about government, public policy, public affairs, lobbying, and how those activities are supported in a civil society. But without ethics, there could be no civilization. It really is the backbone of what we consider civilization versus the all-out warfare periods of the Dark Ages and others in our history. So thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.